Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about how you can come up with good material models for a material called santoprene. Santoprene is a material that consists of EPDRM particles embedded in the polypropylene matrix. It's a really interesting material with some excellent properties. And today I'm going to show you how you can model this complicated material in the finite element simulation. So I have some experimental data for a santoprene material here. Uh, there are uh, five different experiments that I performed. We have uniaxial tension monotonically at this rate, at a slower rate, and then three tests at a even slower rate. The first one is monotonic, and then there are two cyclic tests here. So let's take a look at these tests a little bit more carefully <clears throat> within M calibration. So I'm going to turn off the monotonic test, and we look at one of these at a time here. So there is a cyclic test that looks like this, and it looks like, like some stress relaxation in it. So I'm gonna plot stress versus time here. We'll see the stress relaxes this way. And we plot strain versus time. We can see the <clears throat> this hold periods here. So we load, hold, load, hold uh, for this particular uh, <clears throat> test specimen. It's very a good test. It gives you a lot of information. Let's take a look at the test case number five here. In this case, it's just cyclically increasing the strain amplitudes without any relaxation to it. But it's a lot of information about the unloading response. So if I turn on these two uh, cyclic tests again, what we can see is, is that the material behaves in a very interesting way. And I think it's very important to look at the experimental data carefully before you start calibrating material models, because the experimental data will give you information about what material model uh, will work and what won't work very well. So in this case, we'll see that the uh, stiffness of the material is pretty low. Uh, the stress is here about 5 megapascals. They're about 50% through strain and tension. That's because of the EPDM particles in the polypropylene matrix. Um, so we see, though, that the slope of the, sh the shape of the curve during unloading and reloading is, is very telling. We see some energy loss here, hysteresis during cyclic loading. This can be due to one of two reasons. One is a viscoelasticity, and the other one is uh, molens damage in combination with viscoelasticity. So in a case like this, when you see this response here, you know that you're probably going to have to consider those effects. Um, the one thing that I think is curious and important to look at is the slope of the curve here is its unloading slope. The reloading slope is, is goes like this, and then it kind of stiffens up a little bit here. And that's an indication of Molin's damage. So I think by just looking at these tests, it's pretty clear that this material has some Molin's damage in it. And it, it also has a viscoelasticity as well. So when we come up with material models that are really going to work in this case, we're going to have to have a little bit of those effects in our material model. So that's something we will see. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the data with different material models. So the, the last thing I did here when, when I started calibrating material models to it, I, I said, well, I'm going to add one additional data point. I'm going to set a specified value for the Poisson's ratio that I like because this is uniaxial tension test, and we don't know the bulk modulus otherwise. So instead of just picking a bulk modulus value, I'm going to say I want this Poisson's ratio, and that, that may help uh, in a case like this. So I already calibrated a few different material models here. I'm going to go through them uh, one by one a little bit here. And I'm going to start with the ANSYS hyperelastic model with Mullins damage. So we know that it has Mullins damage, so a pure hyperelastic model clearly won't be very good. So I'm selecting the first one here. I'm clicking mod with load it into this region. And then I just click run once. So you can look at the data here. We'll see that in dashed lines, we have the predictions. The, the, it looks pretty good at the different rates. And here's the cyclic response of the material. This one is, is particularly easy to read, I guess. You can see that the prediction goes up, then it unloads, and then it follows the same path up to this point. So the, when you have Mullins damage by itself, it doesn't capture the energy dissipation during the cycle here. Um, but it does have a, a reasonably good effective prediction of the material. So if I turn on all of them, the average error for hyperelastic with, with Mullins damage that I examined here, we get 12% error, which is not all that bad. But clearly, it misses all the viscoelastic effects. So that's something we don't always like so much. 
And one can try other materials like an elastic plastic that I tried, but I'm not going to spend time on that here. Uh, you can take a look at that in my, in my article instead. Um, instead, what I want to talk about is some other materials that are a little bit better. So here's one that has an error of 9.48. So I'm going to load that one here, and I'm going to run it once. And then we will take a look at this one. So this is a, it's the ANSYS 3 network model. And it's, it's a, it has an error of 9.5%. Let's take a look at the predictions here. It does monotonic loading relatively well. So we'll turn those off. And then it looks kind of messy here. So they're going to turn off the, the big cycle curve. So here we go. The dashed lines look overall reasonable, but it doesn't. It's a little bulky, it's like bilinear in some sense. And the, the thing to keep in, in mind here about this ANSYS 3 network model is that it was developed for thermoplastics, and thermoplastics don't have Molens damage. So this material actually doesn't predict any Molens damage. This uh, it assumes that the cyclic response is 100% viscoelastic, and that's not true, and that's why it doesn't do so well. The average error is actually not all that great. Uh, in this case, but it's a reasonable model to use in other cases, and 9.5% error perhaps is not so bad, but we can certainly do better than that. So let's take a look at some other material model that we have here. Um, one, one that I think is, is pretty good, I'm going to take a look at <clears throat> the, let's do, let's do this one, the Bergstrom Boyce model with the uh, Mullins damage. So. The Bergson Boys model is a material model that was developed for rubbers, and it, in this case, it's an ANSYS implementation that has the Mullins damage. The Polyumod uh, library also has this material model. And if I run it once, the error is 5%. It's actually pretty good. And if we look through them here, the monotonic tests look good. Then if we look at one of the, the slow tests here, they, they, it looks pretty good overall. It captures the relaxation, and the shape is pretty good. It underestimates the energy dissipated there, but it's not too bad. And this is because it has the Mullins damage to guide the, the, the rapid drop here, and then the viscoelasticity helps with the reloading response. So this model is actually pretty good in this case. It's, it's a candidate. You can do better, but it's a candidate for this material. Um, we can take a quick look at the Abacus 2 network PRF model here. So if I load and run it by, by clicking this icon, we'll see that the error was 6%, slightly worse than the Bergstrom Boys model with Mullins damage. The PRF model with two networks is very similar to the Bergstrom Boys model in some sense. It has a different flow equation that drives the viscoelasticity, but uh, it's a two network and it has Mullins damage. So it's, it's reasonably good, but if we look at perhaps the the, this one is, is particularly interesting, I guess. You look at the dashed curves in the middle here, you see that it has starting to have a little bit odd shape at larger strains. So uh, that's why the predictive error is a little bit worse than the Bergstrom Boys model. But it's a reasonable model in some cases to use. How about if we go to even higher number of networks? Have we go to a three network PRF model in Abacus? So I'm going to select that one. They ordered a calibrated. And here it is, error 4%. It's actually pretty good, right? Uh, if we look at the monotonic tests first, see that they are predicted pretty well uh, up to large strains when they under, under it a little bit. And if we switch on to the cyclic tests here, um, let's try this one. See that it, it looks pretty good. It has a better prediction of the the amount of energy dissipation, it's a, it often does this, that it has this slope here that's a little bit too stiff compared to the reloading, re actual reloading slope. Um, and that's, that's a little bit of a problem. Um, but the, otherwise, overall, it's a pretty decent fit of all aspects of this response. So this is also a candidate for this uh, material. The one that, that was the most accurate that I could find was the polyumod the TNV model. It has an error that's 3.6%, so it's uh, substantially better than any of the other models in that regard. And uh, it's a material model that has a Mullins damage in this case. So I set it up as being three networks, each with Yo, uh, two flow networks, and one network has the Mullins damage. Remember, the, the Mullins damage doesn't need to be on every network. In this case, it makes uh, really 
no, not much sense to have it on these networks because these are the, the initial small strain response to giving the, the onset of viscoplastic flow of the material. You want it on the equilibrium network, which is giving the larger strain response, and that's what I did there. So if you take a look at the predictions for this model, see that the, the monotonic response looks pretty good. And if we look at the, the cyclic response, this one is, is a pretty good too. It has the average prediction as one would like. And finally, the, the, just the large cycle test looks also very good. So overall, the three network model is the most accurate material model also for Santoprene. That's, this model has been very accurate for many other types of materials in the past that I have shown as well. So that's how you would work with this. Look at the experimental data before you start calibrating. Try to figure out what aspects of the material model you should have, and then you can quickly calibrate it and compare different models using the M calibration software, as I showed here. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them below.